Okay, welcome back to the final wrap-up of day three, wrapping up of the OpenStack Summit. I'm John Furrier, I'm joined with Jeff Frick, my co-host this week. Dave Vellante uh, is back at the ranch at wikibon.org and, and uh, doing all his research and uh, business that we have going on there. And uh, this is our wrap-up of day three and wrapping up the conference, our thoughts, our final thoughts uh, from SiliconANGLE and Wikibon about what this event is all about. Um, Jeff, I want to say that one of the things that really impressed me about this event was um, on a personal level, seeing open source moving into the enterprise at such a large scale is cool. And so I feel like that's a good thing. Um, and then from a business standpoint, I just see massive opportunity and growth at, at all levels. It's the perfect storm. All, every theater uh, of, of innovations booming. You know the the business models, the technology, and then the demand on the customer side. So you know all those things are essentially all on fire and exploding in a great way. So that's positive. Um, but kind of the, the 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 funny thing is is that. The Cube is new to this community. So one kind of interesting reaction was seeing the reaction from folks here about the Cube. And uh, the question is why aren't you at the other shows? And, and I think why we're here is we want to highlight this growth because we see this at an inflection point. And we want to shine the cameras on the people behind the scenes and you know we talked to Jim Curry from Rackspace you know who's who's really humble and you know Brad him and Mark Collier Lou Mormon uh, the other folks the unsung heroes these guys really did a great job and, and deserve deserve props we have some startups we had MetaCloud just an amazing scale background we have other emerging startups we have the big guys IBM HP HP here basically laying out look at Meg Whitman this is her thing the cloud will be one of the centerpieces of HP's comeback their turnaround strategy so, just really, really amazing, and then obviously the successful formula of the Open Source, OpenStack Foundation, how they managed it, how they got through that potential uh, first chasm of uh, challenge, which was the hype factor. They've crossed right, that, right. and uh, just in general, a great show. David Floyer said it's the best analyst event he's ever been to. A lot of user-centric stuff. Really, really great event. Yeah, I think the, the thing that struck me, two things, one is just the passion, and I'm sure within the development community of all the contributors, they feel that passion every day because they're living it in code, and, and hopefully um, we here at theCUBE were able to, to bring some of that passion to you, the viewers, uh, that, was, that was really all over this conference, and as you could see it within the folks that, that visited theCUBE. The other thing that fascinates me is really the, the you know, building a business on open source, and not just the, the traditional way that people did it before where you added services or training or this or that around open source, but like Rackspace as an, as a, uh, an example of really transforming kind of the juju of that company because it was, it, was, it was nothing like that. It did not have a passionate community of people out in the world that really cared about whether Rackspace was important or not. And now they've got behind this initiative and re, you know, changed the direction of the ship. I think one of the guests said that's why he loves working there. They're not afraid to change the direction of the ship and now build off this really almost rabid community that's developing all this new technology, taking it to the enterprise. And you know, there's passion in, in a traditional startup around a core group of people, but this really leverages a passion on a much greater scale. It's, 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 uh, it's like the, uh, the Egyptian Spring. I mean, these people are really excited and they're changing their companies, they're building their companies in different ways around open source. We I had really some, like we, that. And the passion thing, just to highlight, we had Anita Cuneau here from the Genome Project about getting women involved in programming. You know, that's the kind of passion you're seeing. Obviously, you know, it's, it's, uh, you're getting contributors from women, just key. Some notes I have here just as key themes. Uh, infrastructure as code, that's to amplify the DevOps movement. You're going to see more of, of that networking services in software, this modern data center, this modern infrastructure, agile based, uh, software based models. Um, and then obviously interoperability, and this is something that we didn't get to talk much about because it's still early and being debated. Jim Curry talked about it. he's on the board of that big debate. The big thing happening in OpenStack right now beyond the fact of its success is this one major threshold issue and that's interoperability. And I'm really glad to see HP involved in this because I'll tell you why. HP has a lot of experience in interoperability. They've seen that movie before with client server and the PC revolution where industry standard interfaces, industry standard stuff, multi-vendor support is critical and HP has a lot of leadership there. So making that interoperability work will be the next big challenge and we're going to be watching that. Um, other things that we heard that I was I took a note on, bare metal as a service. That was a term I heard. Um, a lot of telco 
discussions. Um, and also we heard from MetaCloud and uh, Mirantis is the service models are changing. And we heard a comment, I forget who made it, that we don't know, it was Martin Casado, we don't know which one's going to work. There's yeah. going to be some failures, there's going to be some successes. How are people going to scale the services piece? Are you going to co-locate a public cloud inside a data center? That sounds interesting. Will it work? Yeah. Well, yeah. open source right. work. So, yeah, these are this is the, some of the trends that are that are uh, orbiting around here. Yep. And 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 the other one I think is is I think it was um, well, we've had a lot of guests. It was Saar, I think, that talked about you know the smartphone analogy, and we've brought it up a couple more times. But at the end of the day, we just want uh, what we want, and we want it delivered. That, and we want it to work. So whether that's delivered by a private cloud, a public cloud, a hybrid cloud, some application that's drawing from multiple sources, it doesn't really matter. And, and again, I think it's interesting how the kind of consumer internet uh, and the expectations and the behavior of the applications that we interact with every day are driving um, are driving the change in the adoption of the enterprise. And got, you know, on one hand, it's it's uh, crazy times for all these CIOs trying to keep track of all this stuff. But on the other hand, you know the transformative uh, impact of these technologies both on efficiency and scale and um, cost are really phenomenal. It is really uh, a new wave and you do really feel that here at the, sh at the show and hopefully uh, you've got a feel for that out in, out in the audience. Well, I think one of the exciting things is can, can they cross the barrier over and get the SLAs, get those kind of requirements for the enterprise, obviously the service provider. It's really, really exciting. Um, I just want to say thanks to everyone watching out there. I want to thank Mick and Kenny for doing a great job here on the ground. Uh, I want to thank the OpenStack Foundation. Uh, we wish we could have had them on. They just got an email, but we're going to be breaking down. We're exhausted. <laughs> we probably could have squeezed them in, but um, they did want to come on theCUBE. They're just so busy, it's such a successful show. We will have follow-up blog posts and, and, and remote uh, calls with those guys and, and continue to follow them. We'll certainly be at the next show. We will not miss the OpenStack Summit. Not sure we'll be at Hong Kong, but we'll certainly be here if it's in, in North America. But but want to thank those guys. They allowed us to get here. And I, of course, want to thank Service Mesh because they stepped up with a sponsorship uh, to support us. They essentially said, we love the Cube so much, we want to help support that, and uh, want to thank them for their donation and, uh, for helping us. Thank you, Service Mesh. You guys are great. Learned a lot about your company. I met the founder, co-founder last night, and of course, Sean Douglas uh, knows about the Cube. He's from XEMC. We had him on. Thanks to Service Mesh, and uh, thanks for everyone for watching. OpenStack is hitting the mainstream. Is that an inflection point? A lot of signal, not a lot of noise. Let's see if we can keep that up here in this community and a lot of great great experiences, great conversations. Jeff, thanks for, for, for stepping in. For Dave Vellante, you did a great job. And, and uh, that's a wrap here at OpenStack Summit, Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage for the OpenStack Summit 2013 from Portland, Oregon. Good night and keep watching siliconangle.com.